glass uh, under their feet, that signifies the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. Well, Josephus quotes Berossus, and one of the astronauts uh, read this account of Josephus, and he actually organized a uh, expedition to try to go find the ark on uh, Mount Ararat. And there are eyewitness reports of this ark being up there, and I have it on my website. You can read these eyewitness reports. Marco Polo was one of them. Marco Polo journeyed to, to uh, Armenia. And, uh, but anyway, Josephus quotes Barossus, this Chaldean historian, that uh, they, uh, could, you could see the ark up on Ararat at that time. And um, the uh, little towns below uh, Mount Ararat had um, uh, uh, commerce in which they took the pitch that Noah used to make it waterproof and, and made amulets out of, out of it to hang around your neck. And they sold these amulets as little trinkets uh, in these little towns below Armenia. And Barossus record, recorded that. And this, how did an ark that's uh, huge, I mean, it's huge, it's like two football fields long and three stories high. How did it get on top of a mountain, for Pete's sakes? And a Russian aviator uh, at, in 1917 flew over Ararat and, and actually photographed it and sent the pictures to the Tsar. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit and digressing. But um, this flood was necessary. And I'll tell you why it was necessary. It was necessary that the earth fulfill the law. And what is the law? The law is baptism by immersion for a remission of sins. And the earth had to be baptized. It had to be totally covered in water and um, so that it would be cleansed from all sin. And before the flood, they had this technology, and they were mixing with the black race of Cain as well. And all of these things Jesus said that, that would be happening at the time of the coming of the Son of Man. He says, as in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And you can see the, the severe weather and all the signs being given unto you crazy, foolish Gentiles. You crazy, foolish Gentiles, you're, you're in a headlong rush into eternity, and you don't even know why you're here, what, what's going on. It's no small wonder that Jesus called them dogs. He said, it's not, not meet that the children's bread be cast before dogs. That's what he said to a Gentile woman. Well, that, that's pretty racist, isn't it? Well, that's because Jesus was a racist. All of the Jews were racist. They would not mix with the Gentiles. They, they were forbidden to mix with the Gentiles. And that's why you can detect immediately these false prophets that uh, have been hoisted into power within the Mormon church. Um, and uh, this is in fulfillment of a prophecy of Joseph Smith right before he died. He visited the, uh, the blacksmith shop of Mosiah Hancock's father, Levi Hancock. And they got a map for him, and he pointed to a map, and he said, you'll have to go here in Mexico. Or, he said, or it could have been Snowflake, Arizona. You'll have to go here to live the laws which God desires you to live. And uh, Marion G. Romney, who is a second counselor to Spencer Kimball, was a was born in Chihuahua, Mexico, and uh, you know, and, and wh why were they living in Chihuahua? So they could live plural marriage. That's why. And uh, why were they there? Because it was against the law, and that was in fulfillment of Daniel seven, that says that the beast would wear out the saints of the Most High. And and what did the Mormons do? They finally just abandoned the most holy principle. It's called the most holy principle ever revealed was plural marriage. And uh, in fact, Jesus Christ was, a, was married to more than one woman. He was married to Elizabeth, Mary, Martha, and Mary Magdalene. And he actually had children, and he saw his seed in fulfillment of Isaiah, where it says that he would see his seed. And then it says, Who sh whom shall declare his generation? Well, I'm declaring his generation. I'm declaring unto you that there are direct descendants of Jesus Christ alive today who have the right to the keys of the kingdom of God by lineage. 
and it will not be denied them. And this is proof that God remembers the covenants that he's made with the ancients and they haven't been abrogated nor done away with in the least, not by progressive revelationists, not by uh, Darwinists, not by evolutionists, not by atheists, not by those who have denied the Holy Ghost. It has not been done away with. And um, how, how come, it's, if it's so important that uh, uh, Dan Rather and, and um, uh, uh, Bill O'Reilly don't know about it, and why the, the prophets have to wander in the caves and dens of the earth, I'll tell you again. It's because of the enemy. The common enemy has control over the media. That's why. And I got off onto the Michigan tablet stones uh, being assassinated by, by this media and this frenzy that developed to discredit the Michigan tablet stones. And they've done the same to Joseph Smith. They've, they've totally ignored Joseph Smith. Uh, Art Bell has all these crazy people on talking about reincarnation, this, that, and the other. But uh, I remarked to Aaron the other night uh, that uh, they never mentioned Joseph Smith, and yet here was one of the most incredible psychic phenomena, quote-unquote, that ever occurred in modern history, and they do not even mention him. And that's because they don't, they, they're pricked in their conscience by it. They, it disturbs them, it distracts them, it annoys them, therefore they cover it up. They don't want to talk about it. So why do you follow the media? Why, do you, why are you influenced by these fools? Why can't you stand on your own feet? Uh, Brigham Young said every tub must stand on its own bottom. Every tub must stand on its own bottom and get revelation for yourselves and ask God if the, for the truth. Uh, because, let me tell you, Tom Brokaw and Dan Rather cannot resurrect anybody. CBS News cannot resurrect anybody. NBC cannot resurrect anybody. And anything which is not ordained of God will be shaken and destroyed and torn down because there's this great sieve, this great filter, and it's called death. And all the king's horses and all the king's men can't overcome death. And there's only one power that can overcome death, and that's uh, the power that was ordained of God that resurrected the Christ. And uh, did you know there were others resurrected at the time of Jesus? The New Testament records, records that the patriarchs walked in the streets of Jerusalem, and, and the people saw them, and Peter saw them, and he commented that, that the sepulcher of David is yet with us, he, he said. Uh, because David hadn't been resurrected. And why was that? Because David was a murderer, that's why. And murderers cannot ob obtain forgiveness. That's why. Um, until the second resurrection. And the second resurrection hasn't occurred yet. And that's why David was not resurrected. Because he murdered Uriah, the uh, husband of Bathsheba. So, um, Nathan the prophet came to him. Uh, David, uh, while I'm on that subject, I may as well expound upon it and just let, let the Spirit guide me, you know, open my mouth and, and I'll, I'll just let it open my mouth and fill it up. Well, Nathan came to uh, David and said, there's this rich man that has a whole bunch of sheep and he has this neighbor that had one ewe lamb that he really prized and his rich neighbor took this one ewe lamb and, and stole it and slaughtered it and uh, then killed the uh, owner of it. And Nathan said, what shall we do with this man? And, and David said, bring him hither and we'll, we'll have him judged and uh, you know put to death probably for that crime. And then Nathan said, thou art the man because he had committed murder in, uh, in killing Uriah the Hittite. Well, uh, that brings me to the subject of prophets then.